What is up, heroes? This is Midnight Zero, and welcome back to Let's Play Zero Escape Virtue's Last Reward Blind. In the last episode, we had the results of the very first Ambidex game, which were, well, they were quite shocking. Maybe that's, you know, the naive optimist in me speaking, but now we're going to have to deal with the consequences of that. We're paired up with Luna now, and we're still going to have to work with Alice, potentially, as a fellow yellow-colored bracelet. And now Sigma is really just thinking back on what happened leading up to the events of this game and wondering why is this happening to him, right? Why him of all of these other people? Maybe we'll find out eventually. I spent a few minutes wallowing in misery. I figured I deserved at least a little self-pity. But even I knew that brooding and whining wasn't going to get me anywhere. Like Kay had said, we needed to at least try and find another way out. So I shook my head to clear it, stood up straight and headed off. Ooh, to the crew quarters, the lounge, or the infirmary. Do I only have the choice of lounge? Let's try infirmary. You guys know how I feel about infirmaries. <laughs> <laughs> Only great things happen in the infirmary, right? Oh, I'm trying to remember who was here before, right? It's a yellow door. And we went with compliment colors before, right? Hmm. I'm trying to remember. <laughs> How uh, the compliments work. I don't have my color wheel down at all. Oh, actually, I, I should be able to check that in the menu, shouldn't I, right? Is it under the files? No. Is it under secrets? No, I doubt it. What about help? Do, 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 do. I don't think so. Is it under the more you know? No, it's not. I swear it's somewhere in here, though, right? Is it one of these files? Wow, so there are a lot of files to be had. Why can't I pull it up? Aw oh, man, so I, I don't remember who was here before, but anyways. So, this is the infirmary, huh? Oh, Sigma. Alice, just who I wanted to be with, of all people. What's up with your face? You look like you just saw a roach. Sounds about right. Are you still angry? You know, given that you betrayed me and brought me closer to my death for your own gain, yeah, just, just a little bit upset. Of course. I'm teetering on the brink of the abyss, thanks to you. I didn't have a choice. I'm just trying to get out of here, like we all are. And that's enough to justify screwing someone else over? That's not what I meant, and you know it. Except that's whether you meant it or not, what you did and the consequences of your actions. If I'd known for sure that you were going to choose Ally, then I would have chosen Ally too. Ma <laughs> Easy for you to say that now. What? Whoa, look at her eyes. Am I such a horrible person for wanting to get out of here? I have to get out of here. Oh, what, what important business do you have to tend to, Alice? There's so many things I still want to do. Like what? Well, let's see. I want to wear lots of gorgeous clothes. I mean, you're doing a pretty uh, bad job of that now. <laughs> I want to eat tons of delicious food and fall in love. <laughs> what an idiot! Excuse me? I was going to take your side, but after that load of crap, you're on your own. Wow, Tenyoji really telling it to her. Look, let me try this again. I'm frustrated. But there really is something important I have to do. Which is? I mean, to be honest, you don't really have to have something incredibly important to do to justify wanting to leave here, right? Wanting to simply live is all that I would consider, you know, necessary to justify I want to get out of here, right? That sort of a rationale. But I don't think, I think where it can go too far is 
having something so important in your own per, in your own eyes that you have to do that you say I have to get out even if it means you can't get out right and instead saying we all have important things to tend to we all have aspirations that we're trying to achieve we all have things to do we have people we want to see right we have a whole life we want to live in Tenyoji san however long that life might be it's still worth trying to get out and live and so to say my whatever i need to get out that door to tend to is so much more important than yours without knowing anybody else's lives it really reflects poorly honestly avenge my father's murder very important thing my, my point earlier still stands that's what I have to do. What happened to him? Could you elaborate on that? Is it relevant to you right now, Sigma? I don't know if I would ask. No, I couldn't. This isn't the kind of thing I should be telling people I don't even know. Let alone those who are mad at me. Fine. Just tell me one thing. Does your father's murder have anything to do with us being trapped here? I have no idea. As to why you're here, your guess is as good as mine. But it's possible that his death is connected to my abduction. Meaning... I was on their trail. I was tracking down the people who killed him. How close were you? I actually, you know what, just kind of knowing how these types of games turn out, I would not be surprised if her father's killer is one of the nine people trapped here. I can't say. But it's possible that I was getting close enough that they decided something had to be done with me. Are you a detective? Well... I wouldn't really say I'm a detective. Not a bad guess, though. For some reason, I, I didn't hear super well, but it seemed like the Japanese indicated something more along the lines of, not exactly a detective, but in a similar sort of work where I can't really tell you what it is. In indicating some degree of secrecy. Why are you guys looking at me like that? Well, I mean, you don't really have the detective look. I didn't say I was a detective. Then what are you? CIA? No. She's gonna be like, I'm Cleopatra and I cosplay Egyptian clothing for the life of me. Fine, well, whatever you are, you don't look like one. That's fine. In my line of work, the less I look like what I am, the better. Now that's awfully mysterious. Better I keep him guessing. Hey, what's the deal with you and Clover? What's she got to do with anything? Well, you know each other, right? I was thinking maybe you were related or worked together or something. No. She has nothing to do with my work. She's just a friend that I met somewhere. Where's somewhere? The middle of a desert. Okay, so that pretty much confirms, given the ending of 999, that this is that Alice and that Clover, and this takes place after 999. A desert? Yes. But that's an awfully long story. Wait, hold on. Why am I the only person getting the third degree? That doesn't seem fair to me. Getting the third degree. I don't really get that. Maybe somebody can explain what that reference is or what that expression means. How about you guys give up a little personal information too? We'll start with you, Temyoji. Who are you? Just a garbage collector. Any ties to Zero? Nope. What's your relationship with Quark? You two know each other, right? 
Do I have to answer that? Well, if you really don't want to, it's not like I can force you. Oh. Then I apologize, but I don't have anything to say about this subject. I mean, it's not like you told us everything either. I see. Very well then. Dio, it's your turn. What's your profession? Well, you're probably gonna think I'm full of crap, but... I'm a circus ringleader. <laughs> a ringleader? You're kidding. Nope, I'm the real deal. I lead a company of about 50 people. We travel all over the world. Honestly, his character design might be one of my favorites so far, but I still can't get over... I really wish we got to see more of the 2D art. You know, when I have the Nonary games on Steam, and so whenever I load it up, I have to choose between 999 or Virtue's Last Reward, and they show the, the sort of original 2D visuals for all of the different characters, and they look really nice. It was my grandfather's grandfather who founded it, but... My father died at a young age. I'm a fifth generation ringleader. My old man was a trapeze artist. He tried to do this quadruple flip and missed. Well, I guess he wasn't really young. He was about 40 still. Yeah, that's that's pretty young. He was pretty reckless for a guy that age. Oh, he's talking about how he couldn't let the kid show him up. Guess he just took it too far. I see. You lost your father too, then. Yeah. Well, I guess that's one commonality, right? Crap. Guess I got a little sappy there. Anyway, point is, I don't have any darn idea how I'm connected to Zero. I got grabbed on the last night of one of our tour stops. I'd gone out to a couple bars and got... <laughs> uh, I don't know the best way to put that. I'm on my way back to the caravan, this black van pulls up. Somebody grabs me and throws me inside. Before I can even get a good look at him, they hit me with that gas and I'm out like a light. Okay, so what's interesting is he says that as he was saying, you know, that a, a van pulled him up and, and threw him in there, etc. I was like, oh, this could be interesting in that it's a different method of, of kidnapping, right? But no, it's it's more or less the same with regards to the gas and so forth. Next thing I know, I'm waking up in the AB room. Anyway, enough about me. We still haven't heard your story, Sigma. Who are you? I told you guys the first time we met. Don't you remember? I was on my way home from school, and when I got into my car, this white gas started pouring out of everywhere. Are you some kind of doctor? Huh? No, I'm still working on my degree. Shooting for a PhD, but I'm not quite there yet. Oh, PhD in what? I guess you've been working on that for quite a while, huh? Yeah, I guess I have. Can you think of anything that might connect you to any of this? Believe me, I've thought about it, but I just keep drawing a blank. What about Zero? No idea. Do any of the people here look familiar to you? Nope. You're all strangers. Well, I guess I can't really say for sure about K since I haven't seen his face. I suppose it's possible he's someone I know. Just who is he, anyway? Until that amnesia clears up, I don't think we've got any way of knowing. Oh, come on, you know he's full of it. 
You still don't believe him? Of course not. Okay, well, K is a bit of a mystery, but what about some of the others? Clover, for instance. What does she do? I think she's a student. At night, she's a waitress or a bartender or something. Hmm. What about Quark? Well, I guess he probably doesn't really have a job, huh? He's still in elementary school, right? <laughs> Why is that funny? It's nothing. Come on, you gotta share with us, Temyoji. Just forget about it. Yeah, you're right. Boy, his age would be in elementary school, so contrary to expectations, he's probably not in elementary school, and I would guess is some successful business or whatever, whatever it may be. You don't really know much, do you? About Quark, I mean. If it makes you feel better, sure. Yeah, I don't, I'm not really buying it, Temyoji. Well, I know a little about Luna. Oh, interesting. What do you know? Gotcha. I got her talking when we were in the infirmary. Lovely. So Dio and Luna were in the infirmary before with somebody else. Oh, so it must have been Quark then, right? Because Quark and Dio were paired together. She said she's got some sort of medical license or something. Yeah, we kind of deduced a little bit of that from her language earlier. She's a nurse? It could mean she's a doctor. Yeah, no need to uh, assume. I don't know, she didn't say. Just going by how she looks though, I guess she's a nurse. What about her looks says that? That leaves us with five. She's the most mysterious to me. Yeah, no kidding. What does a girl like that do? You've been around her the most, Sigma. She told you anything? Look, I just don't know, alright? It's just kind of there. Like, I looked at you. And some part of my brain just said, that's Sigma. No, nothing in particular. You sure? Yeah. She's a real mystery, alright. I honestly know about as much as you do. So basically nothing. Yeah, she really is an odd character, isn't she? I hadn't really realized it until I said it. I'd spent hours with Fi, and yet I knew nothing about her except her name. And I only had her word that even that was the truth. Who was she, really? The more I thought about it, the more suspicious she seemed. A fake detective, a waitress, garbage collector, an elementary school kid, a nurse, and a circus ringleader. Plus two total mysteries. What do we all have in common? I don't think Zero would just grab a bunch of people randomly. There's no point to talking about this. We should just focus on getting out of here. Also, I see in the bottom left corner, it looks like there would have been some sort of puzzle involving these different tiles. That looks like it would have been pretty fun to solve. I'm sure I'll eventually get my chance. <laughs> I agree. I'm gonna go check on the others then. Where do you plan on going? Uh... I mean, I guess... I guess we'll go to the crew quarters. I think I'll head to the crew quarters. I see. Right. Later, bro. Okay. I headed out of the infirmary. Made it out alive. Nice. Take that, corpse party. <laughs> I wonder who came to visit the crew quarters. I appreciate that we're getting to know a little bit about each of the characters. <clears throat> 
Sigma. Oh, Sigma. Perfect timing. You were in the crew quarters before, weren't you? Yeah, I was. Fi, Alice, and I went through all the rooms. Did you find anything suspicious? Yeah, you wouldn't believe it. There was this pin-up poster that was supposed to be scratch off, but underneath it, there were more clothes. Can you believe it? Isn't that the most suspicious thing? <laughs> Like a secret door or something? If I had, you really think I wouldn't have told you? Anything else out of the ordinary, perhaps? Out of the ordinary. Hmm. What's this book? Huh? Oh, that's a book of meow to cats. A meow? Oh, sorry. It's just this thing that's happened to me ever since I was a kid. Whenever I start talking about cats, I start talking like one. It doesn't really mean anything, though. Oh, okay. I wonder if that's actually going to be relevant, right? <laughs> that's weird. So what's the cat book about? Oh. Uh, well, there was this quantum physics thought experiment called Schrodinger's Cat. This book talks me out it. Oh, yes, I've heard about that. A cat is put in a box with a device that has a random chance to release a poison which will kill the cat. That means the cat is both alive and dead until someone opens the box. Something like that, right? Meowby? What? I don't really know anything about it. <laughs> These cat puns. <laughs> Just telling you what Fi told me. <laughs> so it probably isn't going to give us any hints then. Quark, you're doing it too. Oops. That's pretty funny. Well, what about you guys? What do you mean? You checked out the lounge with Clover and Temyoji, and Quark was in the infirmary with Dio and Luna. Anything suspicious there? Well, this whole facility is pretty suspicious, but... I suppose that's not what you meant. Well, the puzzles in the lounge were Lunar Eclipse themed. Lunar Eclipse? Yes. Apparently, there's supposed to be a Lunar Eclipse on December 31st, 2028, which should just be in a little under a week from now. All the puzzles were related to that somehow. Was there a theme to our puzzles? I mean, some of them involved stars, but generally speaking, I wouldn't say they were. There was a particular theme. I guess maybe mirroring, reflections. Yeah, isn't that this New Year's Eve? I suppose it is. Well, I can't say I know what year or even what day it is, but. Clover was saying something to that effect. The 31st, huh? I've been knocked out at dawn on the 25th, so the 31st would be six days after that. Lunar Eclipse. Lunar Eclipse. What did it have to do with any of this? If it does have something to do, right? It could be a red herring, but I would bet as well that it does have something to do with it. Try as I might, I couldn't think of any way an eclipse could be connected to our abductions. What about the infirmary, Quark? Did you find anything in there? Yeah, we did find something. Just one thing, though. What was it? Dio and Luna didn't tell you? Well, no. Should, should we be concerned that they didn't tell us? Okay. I've got it right here. Just a second. 
Mark reached into his pocket and pulled out what appeared to be a newspaper clipping. My throat began to tighten as I read it. Radical 6 infection spreads. Cure continues to elude authorities. Oh no, am I going to have to make another pandemic joke? <laughs> the Radical 6 virus continues to spread across the globe like wildfire. The WHO has confirmed that the death toll is estimated to have passed 100,000 victims. Oh, we, we passed that a long time ago. <laughs> Immediate quarantine of any infected patients is strongly advised. Is this for real? It's a newspaper clipping. It would be odd if none of them had any idea of what this was, right? If it was a global, well, pandemic, and over 100,000 people had died, you'd imagine people would be cognizant of this. So why is there a newspaper clipping, and why is it not really ringing any bells for our characters, right? To the, even to the degree that it wasn't even mentioned by Dio or Luna, right? So, how does that play a role? It seems a little hard to believe. If it really is some kind of pandemic, though, that sounds like a pretty big deal. Oh, don't worry, Sigma, I can assure you pandemics are big deals. Yes, it does. There hasn't been anything on the news, though. This is the first time I've even heard the term Radical Six. If it is true, then I worry about what might be happening to the world outside. Is there a pandemic raging on the other side of these walls? Maybe, maybe not. I can assure you there's a pandemic raging on the other side of the screen, though. <laughs> well, I don't think there's any reason for us to get all worried about it. I mean, yeah, for what it's worth, it's not like you guys are infected with Radical Six. It's really only relevant in terms of what kind of a world do you expect when you walk out, but that's really only pertinent when you know you're going to be walking out, which is far from a guarantee for a lot of our characters. We should just hurry up and try to find out how to get out of here. Quark has a point. If we want to know what's going on outside, the fastest way to find out is by going outside. Yeah, you're right. Good. Kason and I will keep searching the cabins then. What are you going to do? I guess I'll go somewhere else. Okay. Then we will see you later. Later. Alright, we've only got one place left to go. I stepped out of the cabin we'd been in and headed toward the small hallway. Now, where to next? There was only one other place I hadn't gone. The lounge, da dun It is nice that we get to go through to every place and, and see what's going on there. A little bit more of an obscure route, yeah. To get all the way back there. Oh, hey, Sigma. <laughs> what an interesting dynamic, right? Sigma's all upset, contemplating his own sadness. Phi is, you know, absolutely agree or incredibly like upset with uh, Sigma, but then also completely emotionless. And then Luna's just like kind of sweet, arguably, uh, I don't know, willing to just take the brunt of whatever negativity is floating amongst this trio. But. Can I get you a seat? Are you some kind of waitress? What do you want? Ah, that's that's the clover I remember. What do you mean, what do I want? I just came here to check up on you guys. Interesting, what's going on in the background there? Is that sake? Other types of alcohol? Is that maybe even a parody on Jack Daniels? <laughs> I don't drink, so I wouldn't know 100%, but I vaguely recognize the logo. Huh, so there's a safe, a globe, on the wall, what's written on the wall? R-L-R-L-O-E-D, huh. Well, I'm sure we'll get our crack at solving these puzzles eventually too. So, this is the lounge, huh? A bar, a sofa, 
And three ladies. <laughs> I feel like I'm in the VIP room. <laughs> Can I get you a drink? You better not be underage. Night turned 21 just the other day. I see. Well, I guess we could probably have a drink or two then. Did I? I'm trying to remember. Did I hear that correctly? I think she said that she turned 20 in Japanese. It's probably just a localization thing. Unfortunately, as much fun as that sounds like, I don't think it's a very good idea. Why not? This isn't really a good time to be getting wasted. Really? <laughs> I love that there was like so much personality in that really long Japanese clip, and then it just goes, Really? Oh my goodness, <laughs> it's just kind of like... <laughs> this is very funny. Not wrong or anything, but just funny how that whole first part of the sentence gets, you know, shoved in uh, to this last bit. Anyways, it seems like this sort of thing is exactly what makes people want to drink in the first place. Hmm. You've got a point. Sigma. I'm just kidding. Besides, I've got a headache. Drinking is probably not the best plan. It hasn't gone away yet? Well, it was fine for a while, but now I guess it's back. Are you alright? Yeah, I'm sure if I just leave it alone, it'll go away in a bit. That's how it went before, anyway. Has this been happening to anyone else? What, the headaches? Uh-huh. Now that you mention it, yeah, I did get one a bit ago. I feel th fine now, though. What about you, Luna? Um... You know, I think I did have a bit of a headache earlier. Not me, no headaches here. That's because you were sleeping forever, Clover. Well... Well, what? It's hard to explain. I just feel kind of weird. Your head feels weird? No. My body feels weird. Like, my whole body. Do you feel kind of numb? I think I've got the same thing. It's kind of like, hmm, like when you fall asleep on top of one of your arms. Really? That sort of numbness? And then when you wake up, that arm kind of feels like it's not really yours anymore? It's not just my arm, though. My whole body feels kind of numb and, and foreign. Hmm, I don't know. I guess it's kind of like that, but... Oh, if that's what you're talking about, then yeah, I know what you mean. Really? Is this... How has nobody else talked about it thus far? It's kind of like my body isn't really mine. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We don't want to dive into that yet. But something, something that is resonating with me is that when Sigma was talking about his experiences prior to waking up here... He said that his body felt all light when he was first experiencing those gases. So that makes me think that this is a either a lingering or persisting effect of those gases, right? I'm sort of floating. Like that? Yeah. Exactly. Maybe it's because of the anesthetic gas. The what now? It might have looked like white smoke, the stuff they used when they abducted you. Oh, yeah, right. Yep, we got a pretty good grip on that. It seems like we were unconscious for a long time, so it must have been pretty powerful stuff. You think this might be some kind of side effect? Well, it could be a side effect, or it could be that it just hasn't worn off completely yet. Hmm. A voice broke through the silence. Broke the silence. Uh-oh. Something horrible has happened, says Kay. 
Please, you all have to come with me. What is it? I found something horrible in room 2 in the crew quarters. Something... Horrible? What could it be? We, we really explored every inch of that place. Never mind! Oh, and that music? Oh no. You'll understand when you see it. What is it gonna be? Dead body? Blood? Message? I don't know. Kate was the first in, followed by me, Phi, Clover, and Luna. He said nothing, just pointed under the bed. The four of us crouched down and followed his finger. There it was. The real question is, when did that get there, right? This is something that, if it was underneath the bed, it would have been visible when we initially brought the bed down, right? Because that's something we opened up when we were investigating the room. The second thing that comes to mind is this is one of Sigma's visions, right? This is something we've seen in those sort of flashbacks, or, in, or rather premonitions from earlier episodes. Well, what the heck is this? I think it's a bomb. Bomb? No. No way. Yep, there we go. So, thank you, Sigma. Kaboom! Goodbye. I still get a kick out of this animation. <laughs> Of course. It was the same bomb I'd seen in my vision. Then it hadn't been a hallucination. Which is really important because this is going to offer some, you know, verification of the validity of all the other visions he's had. Had it actually been a premonition? I'll go find everyone else. No, there's no need for that. Quark is already bringing them back. They should arrive soon. How did the bomb get there, right? Somebody needed to have planted it at some point. But it's unlikely that it's been any time recent. If Kay was with Quark in the crew quarters when we all split up, well then there's not really much time where people are unaccounted for, right? We all left the crew quarters after, you know, we solved that, we escaped from that room. We headed back to the main area, the warehouse. We all headed into the Ambidex rooms, played through the game, came out, and then we're standing there and decided to split up. And if Quark and Kay both went to the crew quarters, there's not a lot of time to plant such a bomb. Who could have done it? Looks like everybody else is here now. You see? Where is it? Where's the bomb? No sooner were the words out of Kay's mouth than the rest of our fellow captives appeared. Quark shoved the others aside and pointed at the bomb. See? There it is, under the bed. For several long moments, we just stared in silence. Slowly, we began to eye one another, old suspicions suddenly reawakened. It was Phi who finally broke the silence. It doesn't look like it has a time detonator. There must be a remote somewhere. You're right. It'll probably use an active button or a switch of some sort, not a dead man switch. If we can get it, we should be safe as long as we don't press the button. Hmm. Who was the first person to find this? It was me. I found it while Quark and I were investigating this area. It's actually, this, this reminds me of Among Us, right? Whoever reports the body, who found the body? Where was it? 
We split up to collect the rest of you. How did you know it was a bomb? I have seen it before. Interesting. When? I'm not sure. Because of the amnesia? Yes. Are you kidding me? We don't even know if it's a real bomb. <laughs> Are you going to tell me you believe that guy who can't remember his own name knows a bomb when he sees it? No. K is right. That's a bomb. I'm sure of it. How do you know? I just do, okay? That's awfully suspicious. You sounded pretty sure about the switch, too. How do you know all this? Let's just say it's an occupational hazard. What kind of occupation do you have? I'm trying to remember if this came up in 999 at all, I, but I don't remember. I can't tell you that. <laughs> Spare me. This isn't time for keeping secrets. Please, look at those eyes. What a devilish stare. Just trust me. Just trust me. You're the person who chose Betray in the Ambidex game when we chose to trust you. Are you kidding me right now, Alice? Look, I know I'm repeating myself, but I'm sure that's a bomb. And it's not just any kind of bomb. It's an antimatter bomb? What? An antimatter bomb? I wonder if do those even really exist right now? Not that this that's a you know quality that makes it so like it, it couldn't possibly exist in a video game, right? But interesting that Alice would know what an antimatter bomb is, let alone be familiar enough with one that she recognizes it upon seeing it, right? Antimatter? What? Wait, you mean a bomb that uses annihilation energy? Oh, you know what that is? Anyway, yes, you're right. <laughs> uh, what's Annihil Nation? Huh, I would have thought you'd know. Huh? Why? Well, your name is Quark. <laughs> That's actually really funny. You do know what that means, right? Yeah. Grandpa told me about it. He said it's an elementary particle. One of the smallest bits of matter. I guess something something that's come to mind is... um. Earlier Temyoji was under fire because they were like, what relation do you have to Quark, right? And... As a player in, in English, you might be saying, well, Quark refers to his grandpa all the time. Would that not be pretty strongly suggestive that, well, Temyoji is his grandpa, right? Uh, but I think that's something where, just kind of knowing a little bit of the Japanese, he's using the word, you know, Ji-chan, right? Um, or like, you might hear like Ji-san or Oji-san um, or Oji-san. But the idea is you refer to any sort of old man by that, that you're relatively familiar with, or even not super familiar with. And so it wouldn't be uncommon to refer to somebody as, as an old man, and uh, that's being translated here as grandpa. So it's not immediately clear what the relationship between Quark and Tenmyoji is, even though they refer to, you know, they translate his ref reference to him as grandpa all the time. It's something that I'm surprised I didn't mention earlier, but it's just kind of occurring to me now because I'm thinking about it. <laughs> After we had that whole, you know, bout with Temyoji where he's like, I'm not going to tell you what my relationship is. And I had this moment where I was like, wait, isn't it fairly obvious given Court calling him grandpa? But then it just kind of hit me. It was like, oh, wait, that's a translation thing. Anyways, but I don't really know anything else. I see. Can you explain it to him, Temyoji? Me? Well, you know him best. I thought you could explain it best. Hmm, let me think. What what does Sigma have a PhD in or is working towards a PhD? In? 
I don't know. It's hard to think of a way to explain it in simple terms. You want me to do it? Yes, please. Fine, not it and turn to Quark. Okay, to begin with, we usually refer to bits of matter as particles, but there are also these things called antiparticles. I was thinking about ending the episode there, but this music is just good enough that I have to keep going. For example, an electron is a particle with a negative charge. It has a sort of opposite, which is the antiparticle, called the positron. It has a positive charge instead of a negative one, like the electron. So protons have antiprotons, and neutrons have antineutrons. Antimatter is a general term that covers all the antiparticles. The thing that's interesting about antimatter is that because it's the opposite of normal matter, when they collide, they both sort of cancel each other out. Obliteration! When they cancel each other out, though, it releases a whole bunch of energy. That process is called annihilation. So an antimatter bomb is a bomb that uses annihilation energy. Um. Sorry. Yeah, I'd honestly expect that to be a little bit above somebody like Quark right now. I don't really get it. Uh, oh, honestly, is it that important for Quark to understand that, you know, anything more than this is a bomb, and if it blows up, it's gonna blow us all up? Alright, how about this? You've got men and women, right? They're kind of like complete opposites. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> what happens when you put them together? Whoa, whoa, whoa. We're not ready to have that talk with Quark yet. <laughs> Quark's not old enough for that. And if anybody's gonna have that conversation with him, it's gonna be Temyoji. <laughs> um... <laughs> <laughs> well, if there were uh, quantum men and women, then when you put them together, they disappear. What kind of teaching is this, Fi? Because their opposite elements cancel each other out. Like when a plus cancels out a minus, you get zero. That's annihilation. But when you get annihilation, you also get... I know. A baby! <laughs> I love it. I mean, that's. I feel like that's the natural place anybody would go with the conversation about what happens when you put a man and woman together. Exactly. In this case, the baby you get is the energy from the annihilation. <laughs> it's not a real baby, of course, but like a baby, it's got all sorts of potential to do amazing things. That's kind of a strange explanation. I couldn't agree more, Alice. As much as I dislike you. <laughs> you followed it, though, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but that thing under the bed isn't going to be making a baby. And I think that's what we're going to leave this episode on. So in the next episode, we're going to keep learning about making babies and look forward to seeing what happens with the increased tension between our characters. Hopefully, we're going to get to another escape room soon. But until the next episode, this has been Midnight Zero, and this mission is complete.